Hello, hello everyone. It is Jackie with Pocket of Preschool and I'm glad you're here tonight. Just like I'm glad every week that you guys come to join me or if you're watching the replay, thanks for watching the replay. So tonight we are talking all about um, sensory bins, kind of how I like plan and think through them and then um, how you can dye different, I'm going to show you how to dye noodles, rice, and beans a couple different ways. Um, so yeah, so tonight is all about making fun sensory bins. So yeah. Um, oh, real quick, at the top. So at the very top of this post, you will find links. If you want like a detailed directions on how to dye beans, how to dye rice, or how to dye noodles, I have those on the blog for you step by step and with all the um, like all the products I use like with the liquid watercolor and things. So if you're more of a step by step person, um, that is all on the blog. I also have on the blog um, a free printable and it has tons and tons of filler ideas and tons and tons of tools you can put in the sensory table. Um, so that's on there, so make sure you grab that. We're gonna jump, jump, oh, and too, if you want um, like another video on sensory bins, I have another one, Facebook Live I did on one like um, three years ago, so check that out too if you want more, um, more details. I think that one's maybe almost like an hour and a half. So, all the things. Um, so, you, um, Brenda's asking, where do you sign up for the blog? So, you don't have to sign up for the blog. It's just pocketofpreschool.com. It's just my website. Um, I say blog, but it's really just my website. So, you can hop over to my website and um, check out all the sensory things. So, without further ado, um, sensory bins. So, how on earth do you plan for them, right? Like... So you're gonna do zoo and you're like, well, what do I put in the sensory bin? What's a fun filler? What's, and you probably go to Pinterest, right? Or or you can go to my curriculum guide, which is free on my TPT store, and it has every theme and it has a sensory bin idea for it. So you could do that too. Um, but sometimes you just wanna do something new. So my go-to fillers are beans, rice, and like different kinds of noodles. Um, and I like to buy the mini ones just because they're smaller and then when the um, noodles are smaller, they have to use their fingers to manipulate the, the noodles. And they're really, they, they're loud though, but they're really fun too. Um, but I think my favorite one is rice, hands down. Um, my favorite filler is rice. And I will show you too how I store all of my sensory fillers at the end of this video. I'll show you my, my storage space. Um, so yeah, so I think about, first thing I plan is what, what filler am I going to do? And then I, um, I usually, I typically I'm like, okay, what do we need to work on? What do they love in the sensory table? And I kind of go from there. If they're, if it's like spring and they're struggling with letters or numbers, like I, um, last year for St. Patrick's Day, I, um, some of my kids are struggling identifying numbers, so I put a cookie sheet in the sensory bin with magnetic numbers and then they had the little pots with the coin so I I typically do pots and those little black pots the plastic ones with coins and then the like a dry pea sensory filler for St. Patrick's Day but my kiddos um, were struggling with numbers so I kind of added that in um, to so they could kind of practice the skill they needed to work on um, during play just in a, in a different place Maybe it's fall and your kiddos really are struggling with scissor skills. So you're going to want to put in a lot of um, tweezers or um, tongs and things where they have to open, open and close, practice opening and closing their hands. If they need to work on pencil grasp, you're going to put in a lot of small things. So maybe you're going to put in mini erasers and jewels and things where they're having to use all of these teeny tiny muscles. Um, or you can just be like, this is a really good sensory bin filler and they're going to love it and just make that because sensory play, they are always learning about math capacity, whether they're, while they're dumping and filling, they're usually sorting of some kind, um, whether you intend for it or not, they're usually sorting some of the things that are inside or, um, the different little textures you have. Sometimes kiddos love to sort that independently without prompting or um, 
or all the, there's all the oral language too, where they're talking to each other. And then there's just the problem solving too and the social skills they have to share, they have to take turns. They are watching and observing what others are doing. So, so much, so much learning occurs naturally at the sensory table, but when you intentionally plan, it'll just, you'll just add in just those extra skills and the, all those little extra skills add up um, over the course of the year. So, so think of what you wanna put in as the filler first and then kind of grow from there. So I'll kind of show you what I mean. Here's one. Um, oh, and then two, if you're doing COVID, if you have COVID stuff still happening and you have to do individual ones, pencil boxes are great for individual um, sensory bins. Um, you can get them like on Amazon or I'm sure you can order them through a website or like, you know, just any website. Um, so pencil boxes are great. Um, for individual sensory bins, this is one. Um, I just have these are those gorbanzo or the chickpeas. Um, I typically usually buy these at Target and I dyed these with liquid watercolor. I threw in some dinosaurs, some pom poms, and then eggs because, and a dice so they can roll the dice and they can count and put that many in. And I have three colors, so now we're sorting two. Um, I have blue, green, and yellow. So all of that is happening in this itty bitty tiny bin. And if you go to the Pocket of Preschool Facebook group and search sensory bins, um, you can see too a ton of other teacher sensory bins over there. Um, and I know a lot of teachers are doing mini ones this year with COVID. Um, so look over there too for um, ideas on mini bins. Or if you're if you um, don't want to use pencil boxes, I know some people are using those like plastic food containers that you can get them at like Walmart for like a pack of 12 for like six bucks I think is is about it if you are a teacher mom or you're homeschooling your kiddos um these just plastic bins are great um so I actually made this because I'm doing a local giveaway with um some friends of mine um, so I, this is actually what I made for their um, for their giveaway, um, but it's a spring or kind of a rainbow theme. Um, so all I did was I made rainbow rice. I grabbed these, which are great because they're practicing that cutting motion. These are in the Target dollar spot or you can get them off Amazon. Um, these are great. Sometimes the Dollar Tree has them. I love using little scoops um, and actually, they're, these are actually a, like a little scoop set from the Dollar Tree and they're like in the play section um, and it's like for like the play kitchen stuff but these are so fun for Play-Doh and they're perfect for the sensory table. They're bright, they're colorful and they're, they're tiny so they're not having to use like a big spoon and if you use a big spoon a lot of it will go out of the table so if you use a tiny spoon it'll, it'll be more likely to stay in the table. So if you need little like spoons and fun little things. You can check the Dollar Tree. Um, they've had these for forever, so hopefully they'll keep having them. Um, like a little whisk is fun. Um, I get these from like uh, Home Goods or like um, any, like sometimes Walmart has a whole section of mini um, little utensils. The Dollar Tree has the mini utensils sometimes too. Um, so I threw that in there because they can mix um, with the whisk and it's going through the hole, so that's really fun. And then I have beads, which I just got these from Michael's pony beads. And then I like putting pipe cleaners in with pony beads because now they have to, um, now they're lacing as they play or they can mix them up so they can um, lace, which is hand-eye coordination, tons more fine motor, and then sorting if you put in um, different colors. And then these letter beads I actually just bought like this morning <laughs> at Michael's. But you can put in any letter beads you have. Those are always fun to add in to a sensory table. So that way, even if they're not making words or putting them in order, the fact that they are um, looking at letters, they're noticing letters, maybe they don't know the names, but they're still looking at them. They're noticing what they look like. Um, and then you can, maybe they're having conversation with their friends like, oh, 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 Casey, you have a C in your name. I found, I found a C. So they could be having those smaller conversations about letters that grow into the bigger conversations. So letter beads are fun. And then I put in some colored pom-poms. I love using colored pom-poms. Hobby Lobby has some, these are the ones that are tiny from like Hobby Lobby. I usually um, wait till they're on sale to buy a whole bunch. And then this was something I thought of literally this morning. 
I didn't want to put in a whole bunch more color into this bin because it's really bright, right? <laughs> um, so I just, I think I found these at the dollar store. I've had these for a little bit. Um, but I just put a colored dot on them. So that way they can sort the pom-poms or the beads by color. And I didn't have to go out and buy some expensive little like cupcake containers or anything like that. Um, I didn't have to buy anything because I just put the colored dots on it. So that's a really fun way to, to um, make a fun little sorting bin, sorting little bins for your um, sensory table. And if this was like a table in my classroom, I would probably have these like standing up on the edge. Um, so that way it would look more inviting. But since this is a smaller bin, um, I have them just kind of stacked up. So yeah. And then I have just some um, rainbow rice in the bottom. And you can use any um, any bin to work. They're great. And then close them up. And then if you um, have to quarantine your stuff too, um, these bins are great to maybe give kiddos, if you have a smaller classroom, give each kiddo one. And then they can quarantine for how many days you need to. And then they can switch the bins. Um, so yeah. See, or um, I'll show you my sensory table too which um, you, the sensory tables you buy on like Lakeshore and things like that are amazing, but there's also DIY ones you can make for super cheap too. All right, so let me show you how to dye all the things. Um, so the first thing you need are baggies, a tray of some kind, and foil. Now I always, almost always line my trays with foil because when you're done, um, you can kind of pick it up like this and you can move the foil in and then you can put it in the baggie easier that way and it's not going everywhere. So I typically use foil when I'm coloring whatever it is. Um, and I usually, um, if I'm coloring with my kiddos or my preschool class, I use the zipper tops. That way I know it's closed when they're helping me shake. Um, so for... For, let's do, let's do some rice, right? So for rice, you can dye with um, colored water, watercolor, which is, that's my go-to now. Um, it has been since, since I bought liquid watercolor and found out how, so, how it's so simple to do. Um, I'm just gonna dye a little bit, just so you guys can see. Put that on the floor so I don't spill it. So you just put some rice in a baggie, and then I get my um, liquid watercolor from Discount School Supply. And as you guys know, I keep it in a bin because you can see how nasty <laughs> the bottom of it is. And that way it stays, like all the drips kind of stay in here. Um, you know what, let's do, let's make some green rice. So this is just liquid watercolor. Ooh. All you do is squirt it in, and you can never, I always um, try and do like not enough, that way it's not like over soaked, because you can always put more in, and that, you guys, it's literally that simple. Um, you just put some in, and you shake, it's not in my way, shake, 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 and you can also use like food coloring, and then you put in a couple drops of either hand sanitizer, or um, like that the alcohol, like the white kind in the first aid section. So this isn't as green as I want it to be, so I'm just gonna add a little bit more to the bag. Oh, got air in it. Then all you do is shake, and you can totally have the kids do this with you, but again, if you have your kiddos helping you shake, the rice or whatever filler it is, use the zip top baggies to make sure they're not like shaking and then it opens and it goes everywhere. Cause it's happened to me before. <laughs> and then how I tell it's done is when there's no like globs of color on the outside. If there's like wet drippy color on it, that means I need to shake more and soak it in. So I don't see any color. Um, like like drops of color on the outside. So it's good. And then you just smooth it out on your tray. 
And you guys, it didn't even get on my hand. Like it dries pretty quick. Um, but always leave your sensory bin fillers like out, I would say like overnight before you put them in a closed container because you want all that moisture to evaporate and um, get out of your filler. So that way when you put it in the baggie for like storage or your sensory table, you don't have um, mold. So yeah, so gorgeous, gorgeous rice. Okay, so that's some green rice. Put that down here. Now there's two ways you can color beans and you can do either one. Um, my personal favorite is to use, um, what is it, paint. Um, or you can use liquid watercolor, but I can't get it to stay on very good. So I typically use um, paint to color it. And the paint I use, I'm gonna make these a, a lighter shade of green. I just use like acrylic paint, that's all. So, let me get another baggie. So it's fun too to mix up shades. So when you're doing a sensory filler, like maybe you're doing green rice, like make um, some like, or not really the rice because typically <laughs> it's only one color in liquid water color unless you buy like the neon colors. Um, but if you're doing beans, it's fun to do like different shades, different like shades of green. If you're doing a green, a whole bunch of green. Um, I'm just gonna, and then all you do is take the acrylic paint and just dump it in. I just eyeball it. There's like no, no science to it. <laughs> and then again, you just shake, shake, shake until they're all coated. Um, you can, now the garbanzo beans, which is what I had. These. So these I like with liquid watercolor, like the chickpea or the gorbanzo beans. I like dyeing these with liquid watercolor, but like the northern or the white bean, I like to use the, um, the acrylic paint. So again, just shake, shake, shake. And then you can open it and you can check it and see how it's looking and just kind of like massage it. And you can see, look at how my fingers are having to work. So you can see how this would be really, really good for your kiddo's fine motor um, to help you make um, the sensory filler. So again, I like to use foil and acrylic paint stains. So just a heads up, liquid watercolor comes out. So let's check it out. I actually put, um, so these, I put a little bit too much paint on them or they look a little like soaked. <laughs> So when that happens, I just add a little bit more filler to it, and then I'm gonna shake these up. And then shake, shake, shake. So everybody says you love my shirt. Thanks, you guys. I ordered this from a little um, local shop um, by me to make me some cute pocket of preschool shirt. Okay, so I have my beans. And I probably could have put a little bit more beans in here um, to have the color left. Oh, this would be so pretty for an Easter bin. Um, so I'm just going to use the baggie to kind of spread them out. And then that way I didn't get it on my hands. <laughs> and, oh, I did it anyway. <laughs> and there is some gorgeous, gorgeous. Um, pastel colored beans and you can just get like the beans I just get like the white beans um, I get the smaller ones typically the big lima beans I don't have good luck with um, my, somebody said my nail color makes me happy it does for me too I live in Missouri and it's been winter so I'm bringing I'm bringing the spring on my nails <laughs> um, so yeah so those are the beans and just kind of again just let them dry and then I shake them up a little bit um, once they start drying so they don't stick together but like if you did this and left for the night, um, like for school, it's totally fine. Or left to go home and they'll be fine overnight. No worries. Um, so now let's do some pasta. And you can do, I like to do pasta with liquid watercolor. Sorry. <laughs> I had an itch on my face. So... These um, little mini wheels are really fun to use um, because they're fun for lacing. So, put some of those in. 
And you can put like some of this noodle and this noodle together and it's fine. Like if you're doing like a rainbow colored sensory bin, that's totally fine to do. Um, it doesn't have to be the same noodle in the bag. But I will say noodles are loud in the sensory table. So if you have a kiddo who does not um, do good with loud noises, this would probably not be the best filler for them. So this says teal. So why not make some teal noodles? And again, just squirt them in, zip it up, and then shake, shake, shake. Barbara says she has colored sunflower seeds. I know some, um, you can color basically like oatmeal or those like dry oats is fine too. So if you look, if you can see, I don't know if you can see it on this bag, there is some pasta or some uh, like liquid watercolor kind of on the sides. So I'm just going to add in a little bit more to kind of soak it up so that way I don't waste my liquid watercolor. And then too, I know like I have them all coated and nice and neat. couple drops of alcohol or hand sanitizer in their noodles or whatever and I I I can't smell very good not because of I have not that I have COVID or anything I just have really bad allergies that's why I always sniffle in my videos um if you ever watch me you know I sniffle like all year long um but I think pasta and like the noodles have a funky smell when you take them out but it goes away after they're completely dry. Ooh, I'm stuck. Get out of there. Okay. And then there they are. And then you decide too, like how much you want them coated. Like if this isn't okay, all you have to, if you don't like this, um, just put them all back in the baggie and then you can, um, you can put more wa liquid watercolor on them. And here's here, I'll show you why I like the foils. So let's say that you don't like these very much and you want more liquid watercolor on them. Look, you just kind of like crinkle it and it goes right back in the bag. You're not having to like deal with pasta all over the world <laughs> for your question. And then just open it back up. You can like put some more in there and then lay it out and you are good to go. So, I lost her for a minute, sorry about that. So, um, yeah, so use foil. So yeah, so that's how you can dye noodles. Okay, let me get these out and I'll dry them. <laughs> so I'm sure I'll use them for something. So yeah, and you can see like they're not, it's not really even getting on my hands that much. If it's getting on your hands like a ton, then you're probably using too much. Um, but you do you. So we, I showed you how to do noodles and beans and which this would be really pretty for Easter because they kind of look like small Easter eggs. If you did like a pastel like rainbow of all of these, oh my gosh, that would be so gorgeous for Easter. Anyway, <laughs> and then rice. So that's how you dye all of that. Somebody asked in the comments if I have ever dyed noodles with um, paint, and I have not. Um, I've only used liquid watercolor before. But you could totally test it out and try it and see how it goes. So yeah, so now that you have the filler, and there's tons of fillers you can use. You can use like corn, you can use like small rocks. You can, you can mix it up and you could use beans and noodles, or you could use beans and rice. And that way I have two, two different textures and two different sizes of things because they're gonna do different things with different tools. Um, so you can totally do that. You can do like the chickpeas are really, really fun too. Um, you can use um, basically like 
Oh, sand is great if you want to color sand. Oh, I forgot to show you guys how to do that. So um, if you want to color, if you want colored sand and you don't have that in your budget, buy like the table salt and then put some in a baggie, put some liquid watercolor on it, shake, 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 lay it out to dry. And this, um, the salt does take overnight to dry for sure. Um, but then you have colored, gorgeous colored sand for super cheap. Um, cause colored sand, I think is expensive to buy. Um, but yeah, you could, there's so many things you can put in a sensory table. So now that we have the fillers and, um, I'll, I'll make sure to, um, oh, Nancy said she has dyed, um, noodles with paint. She said it works great. So you could try it. I haven't. Oh, and then Jennifer, um, I think it's a different Jennifer said too. Um, try adding extract. So, um, but again, make sure you don't, your kiddos don't have like weird, um, thing, like have like funny asthma or anything like that. Um, when you're adding extract, cause some kiddos are super sensitive to smell. So make sure like for me, I would have to have somebody help me put it in cause I can't really smell. So if you're adding like an extract to make it smell delicious, do that, but just make sure you're, um, it's not too overpowering, so it's not going to overstimulate your kiddos. Um, and they also, too, um, somebody saw, I saw somebody say this in the comments, but it went too fast. Um, sometimes at like Walmart or Aldi's or on Amazon, they have the, or um, like Home Goods, they have the fun colored uh, shaped pasta. I think sometimes like even like the Kraft mac and cheese does. Um, it had, they have, will have like dinosaurs or bugs or letters. You can totally put that in there too and dye that too. So that's always, um, always a fun one to do. Um, so now that we have the filler, I, then I always say, okay, you need a filler and then you need something that they can dump into. So something they can fill, like fill and dump. Um, so cups are great and that, these are great too because um, if they break, it's no big deal. You can make them, the colors match your sensory bin. Um, you can use water bottles. They can put um, the sensory filler in here. Um, little buckets are great. You can even use like Starbucks cups if you're doing like a hot cocoa theme or a coffee theme. Um, or it's great for like a sense of smell if you put coffee beans in um, your sensory bin. Um, that would be really fun. Or you can buy like the themed cups at the Dollar Tree. Like they have like sports cups and Lego cups and those are fun to put in. Again, they're just filling and dumping. These are just little tubes. I don't know where this came from. It's from something I probably bought in the Target dollar spot, but I save all these little containers because they are they love filling things up. And that when they're filling things up, they're exploring capacity and size and shape um, and problem solving. So do you, they always have something in there that they can fill and then dump. Um, oh, these are fun too, like little silicone or even um, the paper cupcake molds. These are great. Um, they have like shaped ones. I typically just have a whole bunch of, you can tell, <laughs> of just this, um, the regular circle ones. And you can get all the stuff off Amazon. Um, Kim says plastic baby food containers work great. They absolutely do. I totally saved them <laughs> from when I had kiddos. Um, little pans, basically any, or like little trays. So I always check the like themed or the seasonal section at the Dollar Tree. And like, I'm sure these were for summer. These like that, those ice cube trays. These are fun for the sensory table. Um, and then measuring cups. I always take the ring off. That way they can, um, now you have four cups for a dollar. And then um, the little scoops are great, the little measuring spoons, because they're gonna, one, explore capacity, and two, they're great because they're great for their fine motor and they're having to twist their wrist as they um, fill and dump. And again, these are always like, again, check the Dollar Tree. They have them different seasons for different colors. Um, so yeah, and then my other fun thing to put in is eggs. Not like, no, hold on, not, not real eggs. <laughs> You're probably like, she, she's, she's officially gone crazy. I haven't, promise. No, these like plastic eggs, which it's almost Easter, so go to the Dollar Tree and buy all the plastic eggs because they're really, these are like some seashell ones I got last year. Um, here's some zoo ones, the carrots, which, and carrots are great for like farm, so kind of think outside the box um, with the little eggs. So like, this would be great for like an ocean theme. Um, this one has like some puppies and kitties in it. These are last year's Dollar Tree. 
um, eggs. I don't know what they have this year yet. I'm kind of excited. These are great to put in individual bins, um, like I did with this one. Like, even though, like, you can put in counters with eggs, so they can, like, you know, they can put the counters in the eggs. So that's really fun, and then they can match by color. You don't have to have the theme eggs. You can just have regular colored ones. And when they're closing, you'll have to watch them. Sometimes it's tricky for kiddos to figure out how to open the egg and then get it closed. So lots of problem solving, and again, great fine motor, hand-eye coordination, um, all of that when they're using these eggs. Plus, they're really, really fun to fill. And they can they can only fill them so much, otherwise they'll like dump when they fall out. So again, lots of problem solving, exploring capacity, but just these little plastic eggs, and they're so cheap. Um, or you could ask your families too to donate some. Say, hey, does anybody have any um, plastic eggs they don't need? Um, we need some for the sensory bin. You never know what parents will donate or families will donate. Um, if you have a kiddo who is having, who, who like gets to earn like a reward for things, um, or maybe they're like, um, like if they do, you know, make three good choices and or do three not preferred non-preferred activities, they get something. Well, a lot of them love like characters, right? Or they love like Thomas or Paw Patrol or Princess, whatever it might be. They have themed eggs of, of all those characters or like Mickey Mouse, um, Elmo. So grab those themed eggs because now you can use those as a reward when your kiddos are doing non-preferred activities, um, like if they're on a token board or something, and then you can make them a little mini sensory bin with their favorite character. And now, they don't know it, but they're still learning. <laughs> um, we, trick, we totally tricked them because now they're scooping and filling, they're doing all kinds of math and problem solving and all the things in the little sensory bin that they think they earned, <laughs> but you really set it up because, you know, like you filled it with tons of math. It just happened to be, it happens to be themed with the Paw Patrol. So that's fun too. Um, so that's another fun thing you gotta snag while you're, um, while all the fun Easter eggs are out. So here's what I'm gonna do now. So now I'm gonna kind of walk you around and show you kind of how I store everything. Um, and again, if you want a more like long, thing, long Facebook Live on the sensory bin. I did another one a couple years ago, so go to my Facebook Live list, which is at the top of this post, and you can watch that. So, you guys ready to travel? Hopefully I don't make you um, seasick or, not seasick, but you know. <laughs> so, all right, so I'm gonna flip you guys around. Oh yeah, Kim, that is just a pencil case. So, in, the, so this is kind of like my sink area. So this whole top drawer, and you guys have taught for 15 years. So <laughs> this is 15 years of the Dollar Tree in Walmart. So this is all of my sensory stuff. So I have like black ones, and then I have like some colored spatulas. Um, and I use a lot of this for like messy sensory play too. Um, whole bunch of small whisks, small tongs, um, little basters, a whole bunch of different colored measuring cups. I have little measuring spoons. Um, and a lot of this stuff, you guys, I just buy on clearance. Um, some, I have wooden, a few wooden things too. Um, so yeah, so I keep all of that kind of in the top because a lot of the times I'm washing it in the sink and then I'm drying it. Oh yeah, don't mind my pumpkin. <laughs> I know it's not fault. It's fine. Um, and then I can, that way I can put it right here and it goes back, back in. So I'm going to show you guys kind of like my storage area um, where I kind of store everything. So, oh, and don't forget, you want to put small things in your sensory bin too. Like I said, the, the dinosaur counters are great. Mini erasers are great. So little gems, anything where they're um, having to like put things in with those little pencil muscles. Okay. And I clean this for you guys. <laughs> I know, right? Okay, ready? Okay, so you can tell this is in my unfinished part of my basement. So I just got this shelf. It's, it's from Lowe's, and it, believe it or not, it is holding everything great. Um, I, and again, you guys, I've taught 15 years. Some of this I've kept for a while. Um, I love, <laughs> my kids like cheese balls, and these are cheese ball <laughs> containers. Because um, sensor bin stuff is expensive. So like I have sand, corn, this is fish gravel. Those are those like dried peas. 
Um, there's like a Hanukkah sensory bin. Um, cause I'm not going to sort out those beans, black beans, just a whole bunch of colored noodles. I'm not the biggest fan of this stuff, but oh well. So I'm not going to suggest it. <laughs> um, this is rubber mulch you can get from Lowe's. That's fun because you don't want chemicals with the real dirt. Um, these are like a lentil and they're orange. So those are really fun. I haven't used those yet. Um, and then I have all the stuff I've colored. Oh, make sure you guys are not putting in like real potting soil. This is <laughs> for when we, um, have planted things and I use gloves. <clears throat> so do not use anything with a fertilizer in it. Just a little FYI. Um, so this is just some beans and you can tell like I did like a dark blue and a light blue. Um, this is actually for, um, there's little spiders in it. They're fake. You guys, <laughs> I don't have spiders in here. Um, for itsy bitsy spider, like the water spout. Um, there was for apple orchard, it's oatmeal and I have pom poms. So, so sometimes I'll sort things out and sometimes I don't. These are garbanzo beans hole punches. This is actually pet bedding, um, like hamster cage bedding. Um, you can use it for like a recycling theme if you want, and they can like sort the different buttons into the trash. This is just like a combination of beans. I want to say this was, I use this for camping. Um, so I have some bigger rocks, some brown beans, and some, those are those dried peas. Um, colored pom-poms for when I do ice cream. Um, what this is for like snow. These are just um bottle caps, you guys, with um magnet letter or not magnet letters, letter stickers on them. Um, when I did hot cocoa or like I, oh I can't remember oh bakery, we did like a hot cocoa bin. We got some marshmallows in there. That so if my like pom poms and things are gross from the sensory bin, like I just put them in the kind of the top. That way I don't have to waste them and I don't have to throw them away. Um, this is all the different color rice. This is the dental theme. Can you see the little teeth? Um, uh, like a 4th of July. I can't remember what that one was. So this one is, oh, look, this one's weather. So I, I didn't even take these out because I think they turned a little bit blue on me from the rice. But I have some mini erasers in there, some uh, lightning I cut from felt, St. Patrick's Day. Cut straws are another fun one to use. Oh, and sequins. It's always fun to put sequins in. And then here's some beans. Or no, noodles. These are noodles. And then looks like I had pom-poms in it for the nocturnal animals. Colored rice with sequins for Valentine's Day. And then I have two bins. So in this bin, I have like buckets and funnels. Whoop losing it. Buckets and funnels and shovels and like watering cans. Um, whatever. Big droppers for when like we do water playing the sensory table. Um, and then this is my c container of containers. <laughs> oh, I must have bought these somewhere. Okay. So I uh, probably Amazon. So there's a whole bunch of like little tubes. Here's smaller tubes. Baby food containers, random containers, <laughs> Starbucks cups. So again, that way I can just come back here and find a little jar or something that they can fill. And then I don't have to worry about it. And then these are those from Halloween. Like those are great for so many different themes. And then the, the, the um, jack-o'-lanterns. And then I do have some like shredded paper, like Easter grass. Um, up here too. And then this one is, I've done, I did mini sensory bins for holidays around the world. Um, so those are in there. And then this right here is, I always keep this at the top. So if I color different colored rice, I just keep it up here in case I need it for anything and we are, we're good to go. So those are just my mini sensory bins in there. So that, whoops, I almost fell. Sorry guys. <laughs> so that is how I keep all of my sensory. Um, and again, this metal shelf is from Lowe's. It's doing great to hold it. And it's pretty, like it's pretty sturdy. So, because sensory stuff is heavy. So that's kind of where I keep it. 
So, and like I said, I cleaned it for you. It, it was not that organized <laughs> earlier today. <laughs> so, just in all honesty, because, you know, like it was, it had like Valentine's out, holidays around the world was like on the floor. <laughs> so, yeah. So, I cleaned it for you. Aren't you happy? Well, and I'm happy for, for that I was made to clean it too. Because, you know, sometimes you just need that little bit of like extra motivation to get it done. Um, somebody says, how do I sanitize it? So I, I, you really can't sanitize, um, noodles and things, but I mean, if my kiddos haven't used it for a year, the germs have probably all died. Um, so, <laughs> and cause they say what for COVID you have to quarantine your materials for what, like seven days. So if I have a sensory material that I didn't use until last year, I'm guessing all the germs are dead. Um, and I will keep things for as long as I can. Um, like I think that Valentine's rice is going on like mm, seven years, I think. I think like seven years. So I just keep it as long as I can. And sometimes like I'll have some left. You know how like everything flies out of the sensory table? Um, so then you like don't have as much. So then I'll make more rice and I'll just add to the old that I had. So. So Crystal said, and it's a good reminder, you always want the kiddos to wash their hands before they enter the sensory table and after. I know that's in a lot of people's guidelines and things, so that is a great way to keep your sensory table cleaner and germ-free. Now are they going to breathe on it and get their germs in there that way? Yes. Um, so yeah. So I'm going to turn it around one more time. I forgot to show you guys. So this is my sensory table. It also is my stand. For when I do Facebook lives, you know, because I'm, I'm super fancy like that. So this is just, mine is just made out of PVC pipe. Um, I, it's, I didn't, I did not design this. Um, someone made it for me and um, it was just on Pinterest. And then this is just a container from like one of those under the bed containers. Um, and then it just like lifts, lifts out. So that way if I need to clean it, I can. So yeah, so that's my sensory table. So that's my sensory table I have. Um, when I taught in public school, I had one, I wanna say it was from Lakeshore. Um, but I would say if you are in this, like in the market or you're getting a sensory table, do not get one with, and you're gonna do water play, do not get one with wood on the outside because um, it'll get water on it and it'll eventually get gross and warp. Um, that happened to me. <laughs> and so um, once that happened and it started to like splinter and things and it wasn't safe, um, we, uh, my supervisor got me a new one and it was plastic um, and it had like metal, like metal side or metal like supports, I guess. Um, so that way it was a lot easier to clean and it wasn't getting all warped and gross from the water because I, I really do love water play at the sensory table. I think they get so much from it. Um, and I put like ice in it when it's cold and you know, all those fun ice experiments too. Um, so yeah, so don't get one with wood. You can make one out of PVC pipe. Just go on Pinterest and search DIY sensory table. I'm sure it'll pop up because um, it's like, it's awesome. I'll put the link in here too. I, I can't remember where I got it or what, where, like, who the blog was from, but it's a, it's a good one. So I will pop that in when you're, when I'm finished with this. So I hope that helps you guys. And again, um, if you need more about sensory play or sensory table and bins and fillers, um, on my blog, I have, um, like step-by-step -step tutorials on how to dye all of the fillers. And then I have that printable list, um, too, so that way you can pop that out and print that and put it in your lesson plans. I hope you guys had a ton of fun. You guys have an awesome night and I will talk to you soon.